There's a lot to do and see in Munich. But Munich is also a good starting point for day trips to the surrounding area. Just 40 minutes from Munich lies Augsburg, a city steeped in history, charm and vibrant culture. From the legacy of the powerful Fugger family to the birthplace of Mozart's father, Augsburg offers a perfect blend of architectural beauty, fascinating stories and hidden gems waiting to be uncovered. Join me as we explore this ancient gem and discover why it's one of Bavaria's must-visit destinations. Augsburg was founded by the Romans in 15 BCE as an army camp under the name Augusta Vindelicum. Today there is not much left of the Romans, but you can see everywhere in Augsburg that it is significantly older than Munich. We start our city tour at the Red Gate. The Red Gate is the southern part of the former Augsburg city fortress. Next to it is the oldest existing waterworks in Central Europe. It was used to supply the city with water from 1416 to 1879. Today, as part of the Augsburg water management system, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The numerous fountains in the city were witness of Augsburg's abundance of water. Behind the Red Gate is an institution that brings back childhood memories at least for most Germans, the Augsburger Puppenkiste. A puppet theater that has been in existence since 1948 and has become famous throughout the country thanks to television broadcasts. The museum is aimed at young and old and anyone who has the chance to see a play should do so. On the way further into the city center you pass the small church of St. Margaret, which once served as a monastery church for the Dominicans. It's worth taking a look inside. To the west of St. Margaret is St. Ulrich and Afra, Augsburg's landmark. This stunning dual church complex is combining a Catholic basilica and a Protestant church under one roof, dedicated to St. Ulrich, a 10th century bishop of Augsburg, and St. Afra, an early Christian martyr. The Catholic basilica of St. Ulrich boasts a striking late Gothic design, with an opulent baroque interior and the tomb of St. Ulrich. It is home of numerous beautiful decorated altars and chapels, for example the Sympathios Chapel, above which the terracotta figures of Christ with his apostles from the 16th century keep watch. Attached to the Catholic Basilica is the Protestant St. Ulrich Church, established after the Reformation. It is a symbol of Augsburg's unique religious history, Augsburg was a so-called parity imperial city. It refers to a specific kind of Reichstadt, free imperial city, within the Holy Roman Empire, where political power and administrative roles were shared equally in parity between Catholics and Protestants. St. Ulrich and Afra is also the starting point of Augsburg's Maximilianstraße, which is lined with numerous patrician houses from the Gothic, Renaissance, Rococo and Neoclassical period. One of these houses is the Schätzler Palais. This Rococo palace was commissioned by a banker. The future Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, who was on her bridal trip to Versailles, attended the building inauguration in 1770. In 1958, the Schätzler family donated the building to the city of Augsburg on the condition that it should be used for cultural purposes. Today, the Schätzler Palais houses a gallery of paintings from various eras. The showpiece, however, is the Rococo Ballroom, which, like the building, was spared from aerial bombing and is therefore in its original condition. With its mirrors and murals of exotic animals, it is an invitation to marvel. There is also a small garden in the courtyard, which you can visit at any time without paying admission. The Fuggerhäuser are just one street away. Jakob Fugger the Rich, who was the most important merchant of the early 16th century, had these built in the Italian style. It was here that Martin Luther refused to recant his thesis to the papal legate, and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart gave a concert here in 1777. The Fuggerhäuser were the Fuggers' company headquarters, warehouse and imperial quarters. Unfortunately, the buildings are not open to the public today. Only three of the four inner courtyards are occasionally accessible.
If you leave Maximilianstraße from here westwards, you will come across the city armory. The magnificent building front alone is worth a detour. Today it houses the Roman Museum, which exhibits finds from Augsburg's founding period. If you return to Maximilianstraße and follow it further north, you will end up at Rathausplatz. It is dominated by Augsburg's town hall, which was a pioneering achievement at the beginning of the 17th century. The golden hall in the town hall is well worth a visit. Unfortunately, it is being renovated and will not be accessible again until 2026. I can therefore only provide archive images here. Next to the town hall is another Augsburg landmark, the Perlachturm. It was originally built in 989 as a watchtower and later served as the bell tower for St. Peter's on Perlach. If you follow the road northwards, you will come across Augsburg Cathedral, the core of which was built in 995. This makes it Germany's only surviving Episcopal church from this period. It was also largely spared from wartime bombs. Remains of the walls from the 4th century have been discovered beneath it, indicating an early Christian church. The cathedral was then extended to its Gothic form in 1331. The South portal is the most elaborate portal of the 14th century in southern Germany. Inside you immediately sense that Augsburg is significantly older than Munich. You can immediately see the fresco of St. Christopher from the 15th century and other frescoes. The nave of the church is peppered with Gothic masterpieces, for example the winged altar from the early 16th century in the Gertrude Chapel. Being the Philistine that I am, I unfortunately didn't film the most important work of art in the interior. The Augsburg Prophet windows. They are five stained glass windows from the late 11th century and thus the oldest surviving windows in the world from this period. Here are at least a few stock images. On the north side of the cathedral you enter the cloister from the late 15th century. It impresses with its 401 tomb slabs by important masters of the late Gothic and Renaissance periods. Here you also come to the St. Ephra Diocesan Museum, which I didn't visit this time. Further north of the cathedral is the birthplace of a man without whom I probably wouldn't have a music bed for this video. The Leopold Mozart House, the birthplace of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's father. Today it houses a small but very fine museum where you can learn a lot about music, the time of Leopold Mozart and his relationship with his famous son. Most people associate the name Mozart with Salzburg or Vienna, but the Mozart family is actually a family from Augsburg. We will also encounter the name Mozart again on our journey through Augsburg. What I find particularly great about the Leopold Mozart House is that it's very interactive. For example, you can play the violin yourself, but I spare you the ear candy of how I play. There's also an interactive museum to the southeast of the Leopold Mozart House, the Fugger and Welser Experience Museum. It is located in the former house of the optician Johann Wiesel, who was the first to adapt spectacles to the eyesight of the customers in the 17th century. The museum tells the story of how Augsburg's patrician families, the Fugger and the Welser, became wealthy. They were the first global merchants to sell their goods on all continents. However, the museum also sheds light on the darker side of early capitalism, such as the poor condition in the mines or the transatlantic slave trade with America. And while we are on the subject of Fuggers, no visit to Augsburg is complete without seeing the Fuggerei. The Fuggerei is the oldest social settlement in the world. Jakob Fugger the Rich must have had a bit of a guilty conscience about his business. He founded the Fuggerei to secure his salvation. Impoverished Augsburg citizens could live there for one guilder a year under four conditions. You must be needy, Augsburg citizen, a Catholic, and you also had to pray for Jakob Fugger three times a day. To date, around 150 needy people live in the Fuggerei for 88 cents. Not per day, week or month, 88 cents per year. 
The Fugerei is also largely financed by entrance fees. Today you can see how people lived in the Fugerei back then and how they live today. In addition to the museums that can be seen on the grounds, there is also a lot to discover. Over the centuries a number of stories have amassed in the Fugerei. For example, the first victim of the Augsburg witch hunt lived in the Fugerei and a bricklayer named Franz Mozart, the great-grandfather of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Those who don't live here in the winter are the bee colonies, but you can buy their Fugger honey. You can also visit an air raid bunker in the Fuggerei. It tells of the horrors of the bombing war over Augsburg. The Fuggerei was not spared from war damage either. After such a long day in Augsburg, all you should do at the end is fortify yourself with a dinner of good Swabian cuisine, like me, for example, with Käsespätzle, Tischspätzle and wheat beer. I hope you were able to get a good impression of Augsburg. There is certainly still room for a second and third video about Augsburg. The city really has a lot to offer and is not as crowded as a typical day trip for Munich, such as Neuschwanstein Castle or Salzburg. And if you want to explore Augsburg with me, here's my email address. Of course, I'd also be happy to show you Munich. Until the next video, Philipp.